Krishna, 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 Hari, 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 Rama, Hari, Rama, 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 Hari, Hari. Madhyalila, Chapter 16 All glory to Lord Gorachandra, the Supreme Lord of Lords, and all glory to the beloved devotees of Lord Vishwambar. Lord Vishwambar is now in the midst of fully manifesting his Sankirtan movement with his associates in Navadweep. Whole nights are passed in dancing and kirtan behind closed doors, for such pastimes are not meant for the common materialistic man. One day the Lord was engrossed in dancing in Srivas Pandit's house. Unknown to anyone, Srivas's mother-in-law had hidden herself behind baskets in a corner of the room. But what is the use of such hide-and-seek games? When there is a lack of devotional feeling, one is not fortunate enough to see the Lord's ecstatic dancing. While dancing, the Lord repeatedly pointed out why do I not feel the usual exhilaration today? The Lord is the super soul residing within everyone's heart. Yet knowing everything, he did not reveal anything pretending ignorance. He said in between his dancing, I am not deriving any pleasure today. Is someone hiding inside this room somewhere? Srivas Pandit went through the whole house looking for strangers, but did not find anyone and informed the same to the Lord. The devotees continued the kirtan, but the Lord felt the same as before. He again stopped and said, I am still not feeling the usual ecstasy. Maybe this is Krishna's wish. The devotees were thrown into a whirlpool of mental agony. They said to each other, There is no one other than ourselves here. So probably, due to some offense on our part, the Lord is not relishing his dancing today. Srivas Pandit went searching again and discovered his mother-in-law hiding behind the baskets. Srivas Pandit is a sober person, always submerged in loving devotion. He is never proud or cantankerous. But now he began to shake, remembering Lord Vishwambar's displeasure. He ordered his mother-in-law to be taken away. This was done without the knowledge of anyone. Lord Vishwambar almost immediately began to feel the usual ecstasy in dancing. He said, now I can feel the ecstasy. Srivas Pandit was very happy to hear this, and laughing, he joined in the kirtan. The kirtan picked up momentum, indicating the devotee's jubilant response. Everyone was laughing and dancing. Lord Chaitanya danced in divine pleasure, and Lord Nityananda danced around him. Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are not visible to everyone, only to those fortunate souls who receive the Lord's special mercy. On another occasion, Lord Chaitanya, while dancing, suddenly stopped and looked about him, discontented. He said, I am not feeling any joy from dancing today. I do not know what offenses I have committed against a Vaishnav. Everyone stopped and wondered what had gone wrong. This incident is actually a sequel to something that happened earlier. Advaita Acharya is naturally a devotee of Lord Chaitanya in the mood of servitorship. When Lord Chaitanya sits on the throne of Lord Vishnu, Advaita places the Lord's lotus feet on his head. And when the Lord begins exhibiting his power and grandeur, Advaita Acharya is carried on the waves of bliss. When the Lord says, O Nada, you are my servant, Advaita Acharya becomes submerged in oceanic bliss. Lord Chaitanya's nature and position is inconceivable and cannot be understood. One moment he is the supreme autocrat and in the next moment he reaches out to embrace the feet of the Vaishnavas. Crying out in great humility, the Lord said, O Krishna, my dearest Lord, you are my very life. The Lord wept in such a pathetic manner that even the people with hearts of stone melted in pity. The Lord continuously manifested these devotional moods of servitorship. In front of everyone he discarded the omnipotent demeanor of the Supreme Lord. 
Acting contrary to the nature of his omniscient self, he inquired, Have I done something due to lack of self-restraint and restlessness of mind? If so, then, why was I not immediately put to death? Krishna is my life and soul. Krishna is my goal. And you are my brothers and friends, birth after birth. Devotional service to Krishna is the ultimate destination. All of you kindly instill in me this faith. Otherwise, I will become wayward. All the devotees became perplexed with anxiety, and no one could defy the Lord's words. At other times, when the Lord is in his omnipotent mood, he himself orders the devotees to touch his lotus feet. But now, acting out the pastime of a devotee of Krishna, the Lord, upon seeing the Vaishnavas, takes the dust from their feet, offering them respect. This hurt the devotees intensely within, and so to mitigate their misery, the Lord embraced them. The Lord in such moods respected Advaita Acharya as a guru. This caused him pain. Advaita Acharya thought it was so difficult for him to serve the Lord, since the Lord would not allow it. And on top of all this, the Lord considered him as a guru and was begging for the dust of his feet. So Advaita Acharya was always contemplating how to serve the Lord and be especially blessed by having the dust from the Lord's lotus feet on his head. Since this was impossible to have, while the Lord was aware and conscious, he waited for the Lord to go into an ecstatic trance of coma, and then prostrating himself, he smeared the dust from the Lord's lotus feet on his head. Embracing his lotus feet, he wept, bathing them with his tears of love. Sometimes he wiped and cleaned his lotus feet on his head. On other occasions, he offered the Lord full worship. All this was possible for Advaita to do only by the Lord's grace. So one must understand that Advaita Acharya is foremost amongst the Lord's associates, for he has received the Lord's blessings. The envious cannot appreciate such wonderful qualities in Advaita Acharya. So this day, when Lord Vishvambar was dancing, Advaita Acharya was happily dancing, circumambulating him. Suddenly, Lord Chaitanya fell down unconscious in the highest state of spiritual ecstasy. Advaita Acharya, seeing this as an opportunity, took the dust from the Lord's lotus feet and stealthily smeared it all over his body. Lord Chaitanya got up and again started dancing, but he did not feel the usual exultation. The Lord then said, Why is my heart not revealing to me the reason for my dissatisfaction? Whom have I offended that I must be without joy? Which thief has stolen from me that due to this offense I cannot dance in carefree ecstasy? Has anyone taken the dust from my feet? Kindly speak out the truth. Do not worry. You have my assurance that nothing will happen. When the devotees heard Lord Chaitanya, who was the omniscient super soul within everyone's heart, they remained silent in fear. On one side they were afraid of Advaita Acharya, and on the other, if they did not speak the truth, it was doomsday for them. Advaita Acharya, understanding their dilemma, spoke up. With folded hands, Advaita Acharya said, My dear Lord Chaitanya, if a thief cannot have the treasure he is looking for while the master is awake and unwilling, then the thief must steal it while the master is unable to know or see. I have stolen the dust from your lotus feet. Kindly forgive me this offense. I will not do this again if this dissatisfies you, my lord." Lord Chaitanya became infuriated by Advaita's words, and under the pretext of angry words, the Lord revealed the transcendental qualities of Advaita Acharya. He said, Even after you have annihilated the entire cosmic creation, you feel not a touch of retribution. After this total devastation, only I remain, and it seems that you will be propitiated only after you have devastated me. You do not destroy the sages, hermits, yogis, and philosophers with your trident, but those who come to you humbly seeking your grace, you catch their feet and finish them off. I am just a Vaishnava from Mathura, Vrindavan, referring to himself as Krishna, and I have come to pay my respects, whereas such a person should develop more attachment to Lord Vishnu by seeing your lotus feet. Instead, you devastate whatever devotion he possesses. You have reduced his devotional wealth by taking from him the dust of his feet. You are really heartless when it comes to destroying someone's devotion. 
Lord Krishna has gifted you with all the devotion available in this unlimited creation. Yet you steal from one with meager holding. You have no compassion. You are really heartless when it comes to destroying someone's devotion. The Lord spoke real facts about Advaita Acharya's transcendental character under the pretext of being angry, and all the devotees were enjoying the fun. The Lord continued, You have been stealing, and you think I am not able to do the same. Just wait and see how to steal from a thief. The Lord embraced Advaita Acharya, and catching his feet, he smeared the dust from his feet on his body, laughing as he did so. Advaita Acharya's strength was no match for the lion-like Lord Gorasundar, as the Lord took his feet and rubbed them on his head. He then placed his feet on his chest and said, Now see how I have bound the thief on my lap. You tried to steal from me many, many times, a little at a time, but I have relieved you of everything at once. Advaita Acharya said, Whatever you say, my Lord, is true. You are the real proprietor of everything, and I am an ignorant person. Everything belongs to you, my life, intelligence, mind, and body. Who can protect me once you decide to destroy and punish me? You are the giver of happiness, and you also mete out punishment. When Narada Muni traveled to Dwarka to pray at your lotus feet, you in turn took the dust of his feet. When you want to finish off your own devotees, then what can the devotee do? You are supposed to allow the devotees to take the dust from your lotus feet, but that never occurs, and who can defy your instructions? Ultimately, this body is yours. You may do as you desire. You can keep it or destroy it. Lord Vishvambar replied, I serve your feet because you are the keeper of the storehouse of devotional service. By smearing the dust of your feet all over the body, one attains love of Godhead. Know for certain that I am your property in every respect. To say the truth, you can sell me anywhere. The devotees marveled to see Lord Chaitanya's extraordinary munificence towards Advaita Acharya. They were saying, truly the Lord has served him. He is a very exalted personality. The mercy he received is far better than a million liberations. The mercy Advaita Acharya received from Lord Chaitanya is scarcely attainable by even Lord Shiva. We are also very fortunate to be able to associate with such an elevated devotee. Let us smear the dust from his lotus feet all over our bodies. Only those who are suffering the reactions of their most degraded sinful activities cannot appreciate Advaita Acharya's position. All the activities of such personalities are absolute. The cynics and doubters fall away from the righteous path. Lord Vishwambar stood up chanting Hari Bol and all the devotees gathered around him and started singing. Advaita Acharya was overwhelmed with a surge of ecstasy and he began to dance, running his fingers through his flowing beard and raising his voice as loud as thunder, and his eyebrows were drawn together in a frown. The devotees sang happily, Jai Krishna, Gopal, Govinda, Banamali. Lord Nityananda and Lord Chaitanya danced in a rapture, yet Lord Nityananda was always watchful of Lord Chaitanya's movements. Any time Lord Chaitanya lost consciousness and started falling, Lord Nityananda would stretch out his hands and prevent the Lord from falling. Lord Chaitanya's unlimited dancing is indescribable, and when he sang, both Saraswati Devi and Lord Balaram would unite and manifest in his melodious singing, thus fully satisfying him. The different ecstatic symptoms manifested one after another in his body, shivering, weeping, laughing, long and heavy breathing, feelings of total humility, feelings of immense arrogance, loss of consciousness, etc. After a while, they sat upon the throne and laughed out loud with a booming voice. The Lord showered His grace to the different devotees according to their degree of spiritual realization and thereby carrying them up in waves of great bliss. Now hear how Lord Goranga showed His special mercy upon Suklambar Brahmachari a native of Navadweep. He was very righteous and peaceful, always performing his duties. No one knew what an exalted devotee he was. He went around the Navadweep town with a cloth bag over his shoulder, begging from house to house. He was constantly chanting Krishna's name, and tears streamed down his eyes at the recitation of the Lord's name. People treated him with the usual disdain reserved for the beggars. But the Brahmin begged from everyone, 
even from improvised dwellings. At the end of the day, he collected everything, and first offering it to Krishna, he ate the remnant. He never experienced the sad chills of poverty. By the grace of the holy name of Krishna, love of Krishna made him ever blissful as he went to each door and chanted Krishna. Who can recognize a devotee of Lord Chaitanya other than a person who has received Lord Chaitanya's mercy? Sukhambar, the poor and devoted Brahmin, was just like Sridam, Krishna's friend. He was always inside the house seeing Lord Chaitanya dance. This was certainly the Lord's special mercy. The Lord was seated on the throne in the mood of the Supreme Controller Godhead. He saw Sukhambar Brahmachari join the dancing. A cloth bag was hanging down from his shoulder. He was dancing with carefree glee. The Lord and the devotees enjoyed the sight and laughed. The munificent Lord addressed Sukhambar endearingly, asking him to come nearer. The Lord said, Birth after birth you have been my impoverished devotee, offering me everything and remaining a beggar yourself. I also desire for your offerings all the time, and if you do not give me, I must have it by force. In Dwarka I had snatched away the sack of chipped rice you kept concealed, and when I started eating it, Rukmini Devi had taken hold of my hand to stop me. The Lord then plunged his hand inside Sukhambar's bag and picked up handfuls of husked rice, putting it inside his mouth, and began chewing it. Sukhambar hastily said, O oh Lord, what have you done? This rice is full of broken rice chips. The Lord replied, I eat with delight your chipped rice pieces, but I will never accept or ask for nectar from a non-devotee. The Lord, who is the life and soul of the devotees, is fully independent and always submerged in the highest state of transcendental bliss. Who could forbid him from eating the chipped rice? The devotees marveled at the Lord's unlimited compassion, holding their heads in their hands. They wept profusely in joy, rolling about, oblivious of everything, as they had never seen such kindness before. The devotees started up a jubilant kirtan, chanting Krishna's holy name. Everyone old and young joined with tears in their eyes. The devotees wanted to express their humility and joy. Some offered obeisances to the Lord. Others spoke, saying, O Lord, kindly never leave me. Sukhambar was feeling the highest ecstasy, seeing the Lord of Vaikuntha merrily chewing on his chipped rice. The Lord said, O Sukhambar Brahmachari, I eternally reside in your heart. I eat when you are eating, and when you go out begging, it is like I am going for a walk. I have descended to distribute love of Godhead, and you are my eternal servitor, birth after birth. I gift you now with loving, devotional service, which is most dear to me. The Vaishnava assembly greeted these benedictory words with clamorous and joyous appreciation. Only the very righteous souls know the real essence of the begging activities of the Supreme Lord Narayan's servants. It is a real wonder that the Lord of the Goddess of Fortune is snatching and eating the chipped rice that has been begged for from many different houses by a poor Brahmin. The Lord himself has instructed in the Vedas how to offer him food with different mudras and mantras. Without these, the Lord refuses to accept anything. But the Lord himself has transgressed these rules and regulations for the sake of his pure devotees. The living proof of this is the eating of Sukhambar's chipped rice. Therefore, the conclusion is that loving devotion is the foremost of all rules, regulations, and rituals. Rules and regulations are meant to be subservient and secondary to devotional service. Those who are dissatisfied with this arrangement fall down from the path of self-realization. Srila Veda Vyas formulated in the Vedic literatures that devotional service is the source and root of all rules and regulations. Lord Garanga now has directly substantiated this. The Brahmin Sukhambar did not voluntarily offer the rice with the required regulations of mudras, yet the Lord ate it with painstaking care. Those materialists who have been blinded by the glitter of gold, position, and family cannot recognize a Vaishnav devotee. Lord Krishna never accepts the offerings of those who ridicule a Vaishnav, seeing him only as a poor simpleton. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it says, the Supreme Personality of Godhead becomes very dear to those devotees who have no material possessions but are fully happy in possessing the devotional service of the Lord. Indeed, the Lord relishes the devotional activities of such devotees. 
Those who are puffed up with material education, wealth, aristocracy, and fruitive activity are very proud of possessing many material things, and they often deride the devotees. Even if such people offer the Lord worship, the Lord never accepts it. The Vedas glorify Krishna as being the life of the materially impoverished and surrendered souls, and Lord Gauranga is personally showing this by example. One who hears this narration of how Lord Chaitanya ate Suklambar's rice will indeed attain loving devotion to Lord Chaitanya's lotus feet. Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda Prabhu are my life and soul. Ivrindavan Das humbly offer this song at their lotus feet.